everybody. Welcome to Analog Kick Radio, episode 42. I'm your host, Mitch, and your fun fact for the day is that birds do not urinate. Little, uh, no. It's all pee poop at the same they time? Only, they, it's like, yeah, it's like a pee poop. It's, that's it's, why it's that's wet. That's why it's watery. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's a pee poop. It's not, it's not pee. It's a pee poop. Would so, you exchange always, uh, peeing for watery poops? Uh, no, I really like peeing, dude. No, it's great. I would never. Well, hold on. It Who, depends. Can I watery poop in public? Who likes watery poops? Tree? Oh, God. Yeah. Can, yes. Uh, well, what about this? What about a chunky trade, pee? If it, yeah, if it changes your answer, yes. Well, it, does it come out of the same place? Because then, no, I don't want to shit out of my dick. Oh, uh, don't be inappropriate, Mitch. Don't be inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> you crossed well, it. Well, as always, I'm joined by my inappropriate uh, partners over here. Uh, Chris, to my, you're actually to my right, but you're not to my right, to my right. You're to the right on the screen, but oh, you're actually flipped? to my left. Yeah, it's flipped. So you're to my right, which is stupid for me to say because it's my left. Chris, how are we doing today? You're, you're flipping it, but when yet? I'm flipping it and reversing it. Yeah. Oh, Scratch that, that flip and reverse it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Dakota, you're right underneath me. How you feeling, bud? Good. I'm always right underneath you. I'm consistent, right, in my underneathness. Yeah, you're a Am I consistently mom. to the same side of you? I never yes. pay attention. Every episode, yeah, you're but... Consistently, you are consistently to the left. Oh, no, to okay. the right. <laughs> Sound, <laughs> sounds right. consistent. <laughs> yeah, sounds consistent. <laughs> all right, so well, let's talk about what's new in gaming. I'm going to jump ship, but um, that means I'm going to go first. So I'm changing what? <laughs> what that phrase means. Yes, I'm going to jump the ship. Okay. And uh, so my roommate and I got a free week trial for World of Warcraft. What's that? Uh, it's a game that came out a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. I need to tell you guys this story. So we're looking, and he's like, "Dude, we should just like level up a little bit. Like, we'll just play. We'll play it a little bit. You know, whatever. We got nothing to do. I don't really want to play Overwatch. So rank comes out, which came out today. today. Uh, and and uh, he's like, let's just play, let's play some WoW. I'm in the mood to play some WoW because it was it was it basically WoW or WildStar was what we came down to. So we said, fuck it, let's play WoW. So we get a week a week trial after I flirt with this uh, GM, and um, <clears throat> she won't give me her gamer tag. By the way, that did not happen. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it was really unfortunate. I asked her for a phone number and her gamer tag. She didn't give me either one. It's really, really annoying. Mm-hmm. It's um, turned so, into a better story already. Yeah. So, yeah, so she's like, she's like, or, so Kyle's like, okay, let's see how much money you have so we can buy you some of the BOA gear, which is the bind an account, so you could buy like the experience ones because you want to level up from one. And I was like, okay. So they're all like about five hundred. I'm I'm logging on all of my characters to see how much gold they have. I log on one of my random death knights. It's like level sixty something. Um, on a random server and it was on like Stargaris or something. Right. And I'm like sitting there and I only had like a hundred and I'm just, I'm like, ah, whatever. And I'm like talking to Kyle about something. And there's a guy, I guess right when I logged in, I got a billion achievements for something like some explore achievements for zones or something, I guess backlogged achievements that never, I actually never got, but even though I already explored those things. So like, like, like literally 30 of them popped up and I guess they show in the zone. And so this one guy whispers me, he's like, lol, grats. And I was like, I don't know, for, like, for what? He's like, your achievements. And so then I scrolled up and I saw them all. And I was like, oh, lol, thanks. It's my first time playing in like, you know, two or three years. I don't really know what those even are. And so Kyle's like, dude, just like, he's like, your character's a girl. Just like ask him for gold. Like, just ask him. Just be like, <laughs> just try to like play him. Ask him for gold. Just say you don't know what you're doing. So I immediately, I was like, I was like, um, I asked him what his name was and I put a cat face. Obviously, because you gotta put a cat. You're trying to be a girl, <laughs> and then, and then I said, "Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I don't really want to roll a death knight, but I don't want to start from level one. But the BOA stuff is really extens- expensive." And then I put like the girly sad face, and he was like, "What's he the was, girly like, sad face?" I don't face. know. What is the girl <laughs> one? There's a girly. It's like it's instead of the parentheses, it's the lowercase c. So it's like a really frowny oh. face. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a girly sad face. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm learning so much today. Uh, for real. So I make. I was like, if I make a new character, will you like at least show me where I'm supposed to go? And he's like, yeah, sure. And I was like, okay, thanks. And obviously, I had to toss in a wink face. So I make a new character. I whisper him, and he comes over and he gives me like four thousand gold, and five twenty slot bags, just like immediately out of nowhere. And like, so we looked it up. We looked it up on on the auction house, and each of those twenty slot bags is like two hundred and fifty gold. So this guy effectively gave me almost six thousand gold. That's and he doesn't know me to, for fucking Adam. Like he doesn't know funny. who this person is. So then, because it keeps going. Um, so then I, he invites me to his guild, and I get him to like 
he flies me from, he like flies all the way over to where I am, flies me all the way over to where these BOA things are and invites me to his guild. And the guild has been like giving me stuff and like all sorts of dumb shit. And I just keep pretending like I'm a girl. It's amazing. He runs a furniture store and I want to see if I can get him to send me some furniture. That's my next. No, this is my not funny. Is, I'm like, hey, yeah. This... I actually even said like my roommate is starting to play too. And her ex-boyfriend took our best. Oh, couches. this is. Oh my I'm trying god! Really hard to get some I feel couches. filthy, I really, Mitch. Really, yeah, no, this isn't right. I no, this see is. If he can give me this some is. I'm, I'll tell him, and then I'll not pay for the couches still, but I'll tell him at least. But I want to see if I do it. I want to see if after you catfish him. Yes. I want to see if I can get some guy to send me some couches. That'd be really great. That would be uh that would be the uh, the most devious thing that's happened on Analog Stick Radio for the first time in ASR history. The show does not condone something that I was not a part of. It's Mitch. This yeah, time. actually, congratulations, Dakota. Yeah, you are right. uh, you are not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the filthy the- sack of shit today. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm the filthy sack of shit. Well, that I'm that's a fucking story, Mitch. You gotta keep us uh keep us updated on Dude, your we furniture were, like, we order. We were dying when he when he he opened the thing and he puts in four thousand gold in the bags. And Kyle's like, he's not going to click it. He's not going to click it. And then as soon as you see it, yes. it's just green. And I was like, click, 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 click. Oh, yeah. my God. Unreal. Cool. cool, cool, cool. So that's what's new with me. Chris, what's new with you in gaming? Um, Catfish anybody this week? No, I didn't catfish anybody. <laughs> last week, uh, the rest of that week was absolutely insane. That was like the last of my summer semester. So I'm over. This weekend, I played some. Um, I just wanted to like veg out. So I played some uh, Overwatch a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was away. Yesterday, I spent the entire day playing Total War War. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, that man. I video you sent me, Chris, of like the big 3v3. Yeah. Holy shit, that game is really intricate. Oh my god, like, I'm so bad at it, too. Like, unbelievable. I don't know how people can be good at that. Unbelievably terrible at it. And like, I was I was hoping that I'd come back on this week, and I'm like, oh, you know. So I got I'm better. more Warhammer. Yeah, I've been playing more Warhammer. I figured out how the battles go don't have any idea there's an option to auto resolve where if your guys have if your army is just is a lot better than their mm-hmm. army you hit auto resolve and it, it, you could auto resolve auto resolve at any point and just automatically fights the battle for you and lets you win or lose and then your guys get a certain amount of uh, damage that i guess it just calculates randomly i just auto resolve every time <laughs> like oh, unless yeah. i absolutely after i'm so bad even if like where i'm overwhelmingly going to win it's going to be like there's different levels of victory. It's going to be a close victory. I don't know how I'm so bad at this game. I'm <laughs> awful at it. But so it's I'll still fun it for you, though, right? What? Obviously. But it's still fun for you, obviously. Yeah, it's still fun. Like, I still play because I'm having fun just on the campaign map. I made it a little bit harder. I'm playing as the, the orcs now. I beat my human campaign on normal just to figure it out. Now I'm playing the orcs. And if you, with the orc armies, if you like fight enough and raise up your fightiness level, mm-hmm. an entire other or- our orc army comes to join you. Right. That's not you mentioned it last week. Dollars. The, the yeah, wag army, about right? This last week. Yeah, yeah the wa. So the, I'm just like just keep auto resolving and then get a bunch of wa's, and so I just have a bunch of armies that I could just auto resolve easily against a bunch of guys. Nice. So like, hopefully, I don't have to actually fight anyone. <laughs> or I'm going to lose. <laughs> That's when he taps general, out. Classic general mentality. Yeah. Yeah, right. Fight him for me. Right. Sweet. Um, Dakota, what about you? Me, this week, new in gaming. Um, I played a lot of video games. What is it? Because my, uh, my fiance is uh, on vacation. Um, so, Ooh, what the hell did I play? Cool man. Ooh. There. Yeah. Um, let's see. We played some Dungeons and Dragons. That's not a video game. That was game. awesome. That was cool, that, though. That was still sweet. Felt yeah, like man. a video game. Ever since Matt Colville came on the show, you know, we've been like, oh, D&D, D&D, and actually started playing. Um, I rolled a sweet card. I bring my uke to the table. It's sweet. Yeah. Uh, but this isn't a D&D podcast. Uh, so for video right, games, right, right. I played uh, I played Overwatch 2. I mean, you know, of course. Oh, yeah, both. I played Overwatch 2, man. Fuck it. And I guess we can talk about, like, uh, the, the ranked play it just got implemented today. I know that Mitch has done at least one placement match because he was doing one at the same time. He did three. Uh, I only did one, uh, and I'm one for one. So I think if I stop playing competitive Overwatch for the rest of my life, I uh, I go out batting a thousand. Is that right? Oh, yes, that's really yeah, good. That's it. So that Bravo. might be in the uh, yeah, that might be in the stars for me. Um, what do you think about about the mode so far? Uh, it was I like it. It felt like people were doing things on purpose instead it, of it really does six Hanzos. Yeah, like that, I mean you can see the like tryhardiness, right? <laughs> I yeah. mean that's what you and signed that, up that's, for. That's, 
that speaks for me right there. Like people are trying hard and it's great. Um, Have you, also uh, people love when I get to, when I just auto select mercy, they're like, mm-hmm. hell yeah. yeah. Have you had um, any, uh, had any spoiled, spoiled sports yet? Some, some cry bitches in the uh, first no, three well, matches. So the, the first three games that I played were with these guys. I met a couple of days ago that I, we just like steamrolled two separate games where like nobody died. Uh, as yeah. I was playing Mercy, and he was like, dude, you need to add me. We're going to fucking play some rank together when it comes out. And cool. so he had a team of five ready. He's like, we need, a, we need a fifth, and we need a healer. And I was like, nice. Sign me up. Oh, so man. we That's won be the best. two, and we lost one. And it was uh, the one that we lost. We, I mean, I, we should have lost. They had some godlike people on them. But oh, they yeah. had two people that had prestige twice. On oh, God. So just a bunch <laughs> of poop socks on that team. <laughs> Holy shit. That's going to be the scary thing now, seeing those stars. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, um, yeah. I think Overwatch the is going to be all right the first couple of days because everybody's going to be just into the mode and it's going to be like, oh man, we didn't lose, but good try, guys. It, we'll get them next Fucking time, so, and then yeah. next next week it's going to be back to what we expect from the internet. Yeah. So you <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. So and get it in now. So people, people will yell at you. They will actually yell at you. I was surprised that they didn't. You, nobody in my matches used voice chat. I was the only person that spoke, and that surprised me. I figured you get in the Try hard mode where in a game yeah. like this, communication's pa- paramount, you know, nobody said a word. I was surprised. We still won. Well, so. I, what I'm noticing is that, like, and I noticed it when I used to play Heroes of New Earth. Um, Heroes of New Earth was like a MOBA just like Dota, yeah. uh, and it had, like, voice chat. Nobody talked. Even though, right. and, and that was, like, the thing that everybody says, like, in League. Like, everyone's like, oh, why doesn't League have voice chat? It's like, no one's really going to use it. No one used it in Han. Surprising. Like, very, very seldomly would you run into somebody, and that's because when you want to call someone a fucking asshole, it's it's a lot harder to do it with your voice. It's a lot easier to type it. I would rather I mean, say I, it because then there's no record. I, I will, yeah. I will, but a lot of other people, like the shy hards, are going to, they want to type it. <laughs> the shy hards. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jesus, move us on, please. All right, let's, uh, yeah, let's move on to the main topic. All right, last week we said we were going to talk about AAA games, but we ended up bashing the World of Warcraft movie uh, for the entire episode. So this week, we promise you, we're actually going to do AAA games this week. Um, we're just going to break them down. Uh, brief intro to AAA games, if you do not know what they are. They're just games made by high-end studios, highly funded, um, very popular studios making these uh, making these games. Um, I mean, that's... Is there anything else? I these are the, uh, the Assassin's Creed's, the World yes, of Warcraft's, your, your uh, big, Call your of Duty's. Yeah, the big names that you're going to see at, like, E3. The big names you're going to see coming from all, like, the major publishers so let's sure. talk about let's talk about triple a for a second because and so as a as a chris you called me what did you call me you called me a game what did, what, did, what was the phrasing you said layman you said you called no he said you're a game player Rube? not a game oh you're a game pl- <laughs> i said it real fast it's so so dumb to to say it again da- game player not a game knower <laughs> yeah i'm a game wow. player not a game knower and that's okay. that's accurate i said I'm, that the other day i'm not gonna <laughs> yeah i'm 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 not somebody who's going to delve into like all the big news and stuff like that. Like you guys obviously have, and I'm more of just like, I'm just going to play whatever I want to play. You know, I, I, it, I didn't play Ocarina of Time until I was 22. Like, I mean, you know, I, I missed a lot of things. So it's too busy playing Tony Hawk. So this notion of AAA gaming just kind of <laughs> came out of nowhere. Like I didn't really hear about AAA gaming until briefly before we started the podcast, when we started talking about doing the Bit Cultures thing is when I really started hearing about AAA gaming where the fuck did this notion of a AAA developer come from? When when did this happen? And and more or less, how did it happen? Dakota, maybe you'll know a little bit more about this. Shed some light. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. And I know that Chris has got some history too to speak on. Um, I think uh, according to the, the video game history books, um, after the, the video game crash in 83, uh, publishers uh, were trying to find a way to distinguish their games from like, all of the drivel that was out there. And so um, it, uh, different publishers tried different things. I think the one that most people look to as maybe the precursor to this idea of AAA is Nintendo. Nintendo put the uh, the gold stamp, the what they call it, uh, Nintendo yeah. seal, N- Nintendo of seal approval. of quality. You know the oh, thing, it's like a little yeah, gold yeah. sunburst that says Nintendo in the middle. Yeah. Um, they started putting that stamp on games, basically saying these are good. These are actual you know, large studio effort, high effort um, uh, games. 
They Go had a uh, part of that quality was they had to have no bugs in it. Well, on that, that's yeah, what they. That's what they. Bugs on release. That's, that's what, what they, they demanded. Said. It's obviously not the case. There's no such thing as a piece of software with zero bugs. But that's what they said. They said you may not have difficult. any bugs. Like people had to dig really hard in like in old Nintendo games to find a bug. And yeah. That's why those old kind of games are are known for like just being kind of quality right off the bat, like works of art. Yeah. You, you wouldn't really run into them. And a lot of developers said that that mentality from the publisher to require that of them, or at least uh, try to have that level of, of quality, changed the way that developers thought about developing games. It kind of changed their attitude towards game making. It's like, oh, okay, we really do have to, you know, give this our all. Um, and so they did. And then uh, during the late 90s, um, word, word has it that just like at trade shows, some developers kind of collectively agreed, hey, AAA, we can start using, it's like, developers outside of the Nintendo realm are like, well, what do we do? We don't have the Nintendo seal of quality. So what can we say about our games that kind of make them seem to stand out? And they said, okay, let's, let's call them triple a, like, like, uh, the school grading system, not just an a, a triple a. And now we have triple a games. Now everybody knows it. That's what I was going to pretty much bring up. Like that's my knowledge. I scoured the internet for, for information about like the first, like l- labeling of triple a and mm-hmm. i couldn't find it there's some book apparently that some guy referenced when it happened yeah. i was trying to find the first i don't know when it was so it's, but it's oh go, go ahead. ahead no no go ahead well it, it to me it just seemed like something that kind of just happened it was kind of almost like a, a a a slang term that eventually just stuck and now is yeah. kind of like what we actually use mm-hmm. kind of it's, it, like, that's, it's it, like the they, on fleek of the video game generation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure if it's the fleek. But... Seal of fleek right there on the, on the front of the... <laughs> These video games are on fleek. Uh, SOF. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, basically it's, it's kind of... They wanted to, to... Movies were entertainment's form of like, you know, what, what gaming wanted to reach up to. Is he okay? He's all right. <laughs> don't don't acknowledge. He's doing it on purpose. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah. So basically, they had to do like the movie did. Um, you know, they had their own own form of rating system, and they have like you know their Academy Awards and their big thing. So gaming game developers wanted to become a serious form of entertainment. They wanted to have their own, you know, high ranking ranking system i guess and so that's kind of where this was it wasn't so much as that they were just kind of thrown out there they just wanted to be recognized in some way all right and, and that makes sense yeah it just it just seemed like it came out of nowhere from at least for me as somebody who's played a lot of gaming and uh, played a lot of games and all of a sudden like randomly and it's what's weird to me is that like it only seems to apply or i mean sometimes i guess to certain consoles and certain publishers because like I don't think I've ever heard Blizzard call any of their games AAA games, but I would consider their games based on comparison AAA games. But I don't it's, really think ever anyone's ever called Overwatch like a AAA game. I don't. I don't think I've ever heard that in like well, the coming Overwatch, out of that game. Overwatch might be a poor example just because it is on consoles, but I think that the term, I mean, mostly is used within the console space. I think. I mean, in my experience, at least. But I mean, you can definitely now that we all kind of know what it means, we can all use it to describe something like. World of Warcraft oh, or, or another Blizzard game, which you, you're right. I don't think I've ever some, especially their PC titles, like oh, Triple A Blizzard. Mm, not really. Like, not wow, really like, have no. you ever heard WoW be called a Triple A game? Like, it is, but I not don't really. think we've ever heard it called that. I, I've heard it, it being called like a Triple A MMO when being compared to like, like everything the else. Korean MMOs <laughs> that come out. <clears throat> yeah, that are yeah, just I, kind of like grindy, but sure, it makes sense. Chris, didn't you say that you had uh, uh, in your in your research like come across? Uh, uh, something about blockbusters and how I like you were, you were seeing how like blockbuster oh, yeah, it relates was, uh, to interesting. I, that was just about blockbusters. Uh, that was uh, at what the, why they called it blockbuster was like back in the forties, they started calling movies that were really big a blockbuster. Cause it, it was like a, a bomb. There was a bomb called the bo- blockbuster used in world war two that they drop and would destroy an entire block in a city. Wow. So I guess it was kind of like, oh, this movie is huge. The entire block is filled with people. Like, a, it blew up the block. So that's kind of wow. a, a really cool little tidbit of knowledge I learned. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Hmm. That's pretty cool. So yeah, I mean, nowadays, even though that we, the the term kind of had that that 
origin that it had, now we all kind of know that it just means like heavy resources, whether that be budget or manpower or marketing, yeah. usually all three, but it's, we know that that's what it means. It means power and... Yeah. Not quite like what we used to think like with the uh, Nintendo seal of approval where you knew this was going to be 100% quality. Because there's a lot of AAA anymore, games right? out, which we could get into. There's a lot of AAA games right, out right now that they could definitely not be, you know, up to that level of quality. But right. Right. it's I'm... the amount of money and and budget that these games and, and you know, pedigree, if you will, sure. from the companies backing them. Sure. Right. So, so I got a question here and like, I mean, okay, I'm going I'm to start it off with an unbiased way to answer this question or to ask this question, but what do AAA games or I guess AAA developers, what do they actually provide for the industry? Uh, cause I, I have some feelings on it, but I want to hear your guys' opinions on it first. Like, so Dakota, I'll toss it to you first. Like, what do you think that they actually bring to the table? So they're going to bring everything that comes with those big budgets Things that we, we talked about indie games um, many episodes ago and how indie games can enjoy space where they can experiment, right? Because they don't have a lot of money riding on them. So you might find your more interesting ideas gameplay wise in the indie space. Um, the, the AAA uh, strength is money. So you're going to have like uh, uh, the sweetest uh, quality graphics, fidelity, you know, right. animation usually. Um, stuff like that. As far as gameplay is concerned, though, that's kind of where it suffers. I think Uncharted 4 is like a phenomenal example because the gameplay is kind of whatever, you know, it's it's fine. Um, but uh, the the animations and like storytelling and cinematic narrative, that's where that's where that game shines. Right. Chris, thoughts? Maybe yeah. what, what do you think? Do you think that they maybe like I guess my question is, are they setting like a standard for certain things, like for, for graphics, like you said, or for gameplay or anything like that? Is, are, are, do we think that AAA is kind of where we're seeing these standards being set? I could definitely think you could say that. Like, for, for instance, AAA, since they have the budget, when you see a game that comes out, uh, I'll use Call of Duty as an example. Ooh, knocked over my mic there. I'll use Call of Duty as an example because you uh, have those single player, even though people don't play it for the single player, you have the single player uh, sequences that have, you know, you're going through a, a city on a Humvee and everything's exploding around you, kind of like what you'd see in an action movie sequence, like a car chase sequence right. and everything, right. all those big things. AAA games have the liberty to throw that in there. They have that big budget. They have a way to add that to the story. It's not just telling the story. It's adding like those little extra Michael Bay explosions to the story that like an indie dev or something wouldn't necessarily be able to add to it. So they do add the kind of, you could say the display or the the the, prom, the promotion. What's the word I'm looking for? Presentation, mm -hmm. I guess, right. standard to it. Sure. And maybe there is even uh, like we talked about how quality is not necessarily uh, a given anymore. Somebody in chat says looking at you, Ubisoft. That's the first thing that came to my mind too. Everybody made a big deal about um, uh, which which Assassin's Creed was that Unity that had a couple of very high profile bugs, like the one where the dude's face was fucking inside out because his textures were missing. He was like all teeth and gums, you know. Um, <laughs> or the uh, the the Assassin's Creed where it's just like the eyes and the mouth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the, I think that's where you're, yeah. Yep. Um. But I think about a game like Ark, and as much as I love Ark, um, Ark is a game of ideas because it's not AAA. It's 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 a bunch of dudes doing what they whatever they want to do, um, and that game is jank as fuck, man. The the graphics are good because they're using the Unreal Engine, but the animations are jank. Um, the uh, the net code is a little jank. Um, so like you know, there's like a lot of lag and, and you know glitchy That's feeling. Um, and that's something you do actually, I mean, you know, Assassin's Creed aside, like, and that's a funny example. It's like they had a couple notable, obvious bugs that people made a big deal of, but generally speaking, AAA games, I think are, uh, they, they're going to be better. You know, they, they have more expertise. The people that are making those games have probably been make, making games for longer than an indie dev. I mean... Right. You know. And they have a they have a team of experience. It's not just like maybe a, a group of ten guys and one of them used to work for a game development company and then it's his like coder friend who didn't want to work at the daily grind anymore. Sure. It's a team of people all working off each other, have a lot of resources, so you're gonna have this 
like thousand years of experience in the same office just working on a level design and as exactly. opposed to each person yeah. individually having to work on level design along with character design yeah right. and i don't i don't mean to the, shit on indie the, devs right. too like that's not like necessarily oh, yeah. true like indie <laughs> devs are perfectly capable this is just kind of like broad strokes Go ahead, Mitch. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, they could be totally fine, but you're not going to be able to create the amount of levels as like with that quality as many as they do for for AAA games in a, that amount of time with just one person. It's just sure, not right. going to happen. Right. Yeah. Spe- if you're assembly lining a level as opposed to like one person doing the whole thing, you're yeah. going to pump out a lot more. You can uh, just. But do maybe that. that's not the. Maybe that's not the right thing though. That's kind of like where my questioning. Uh, starts it's like maybe that's not good maybe just like assembly lining and each person only looking at one specific piece instead of the whole thing is not as good as one person looking at the entire level sure and like spending so much time on each little piece to make sure it's all one cohesive thing it's kind of to defend triple a you could have all those people working on that one thing also yeah you could have a whole group yeah you could you you could it's almost a question of like product management at that point because when you have a huge team of developers, then you need a bunch exactly. of fucking guys that don't actually code that just tell you what to do and try to keep the vision cohesive. If you have a small team, like think about like Hello Games developing uh, No Man's Sky right now, their team is tiny. They have like, I don't know, 10, 12 people, if that. Yeah. They don't need to have like a bunch of people trying to orchestrate this big thing. They're all in the same fucking room. I mean, like it's that yeah, they small. They probably have intimate. like a Google Doc. <laughs> God. <laughs> Maybe more than that, but I bet they started with one for fucking sure, right? And <laughs> yeah. and like in the in the AAA space, you're gonna have these like fucking legions of developers, and in, in for better or for worse, right? Maybe that does that allows for things like quality and fidelity and stuff like that, but maybe it waters down the essence of a game. Maybe it runs the risk of watering down the essence of a game. They might have right. good ideas, but that uh, we all know how the um, department of <laughs> driving cars and motor vehicles goes. With bureaucracy gets a hold. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea where you're going, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I got yeah. you. I got bureaucracy you. Bureaucracy yeah. in charge of the DMV, it's going to take a while. It's the same thing with, uh, same thing with developing. One thing I do, I will, I will say to defend AAA gaming is they're going to set the standard for, for um, like hardware. You know, you're going to get, you're going to get the backing of like really powerful servers. Like you were talking about Arc and how there's a lot of lag and their netcode sucks and this and that. Uh, I buy a Call of Duty game. I know that shit's gonna be like on point. Maybe you're gonna have a couple bugs at the beginning of the release, or a couple of blips here and there because it's like high traffic or whatnot. But for the most part, that shit's gonna run smooth, and you're gonna know it. And so you get that that comfort knowing that your game's gonna run the right way if you're trying to play it online. I want to come back to that because that's definitely one of the things that stopped me from getting into Ark as much. Like I love the idea about it. I've started playing it a little bit, and it just like even when somebody poops which I love that people poop all the time on the floor. Like it drops like eight times for the one poop. Yep. And it's like, I cannot, I cannot play this. Like, I don't know if I'm actually going to shoot a dinosaur. I don't know what I'm actually doing. Cause right. the net code is awful. That's something I, the standard definitely is set by AAA. but at the same time, they also can set negative standards, um, bad standards for the industry. For instance, you mentioned how at the beginning, you always know there's going to be a couple bugs that they're going to patch out. We didn't always know there'd be a couple bugs that we used to patch out. These AAA has the team that can work on bugs after the game's released. So now even uh, sometimes we see indie developers just try to push out a game as fast as possible so that, oh, yeah, we'll just fix a bug when it comes out, but their team isn't as large, so maybe the bug fix won't be coming for a, a couple months down the line. Yep. Well, totally. that's yeah, that's a product of, of you know the internet, though. I don't think... I mean, that's just kind of like the world of adapting to the internet. If you can release a game like a couple months ahead of schedule and patch the, like the minor bugs that come out when they come out by just like but, pushing but an update. Who like, set that? Who set that standard? Bill Gates. The game, no. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, the game industry, the, the AAA industry set that standard. It used to be when you bought a game, it was complete. You didn't have to wait for a bug patch so that your game wouldn't be corrupted on save. I mean, we, we discussed this when we talked about certain games that came out with day one, day one patches. It's like, are you kidding me? That's not that never used to be a thing. When you bought yeah. Super Mario Brothers two for your SNES, that that's what you got. Yeah, and, and that's I mean, and that's just part of the the always online, uh, like digitally available culture that we have now. But what what AAA does have is is a larger QA team. Generally speaking, they're gonna have they were there. We mentioned this in our which which episode are always online or our indie one where a AAA team is going to have 
people who are employed solely to test. They don't even write code. They just test the game. And that's something that an indie team just won't have. They're probably going to have their developers QA, I, I assume. Right. Oh, we also mentioned the fact that, like, you know, the AAA, the AAA companies get the opportunity to do things that, I mean, some de- indie developers are doing it now, uh, but to have some sort of like a beta test for eager players that want to sure. play their game. Um, sure. That's kind of like your own. Form of we saw Blizzard itself. do that with Overwatch. They they uh, beta tested the shit out of that, and they took. And it's funny, like they had a lot of backlash over their closed beta because a lot of people wanted in. And it's a funny thing because our, our the games uh, culture has been kind of taught that beta doesn't even mean test anymore; it just means preview, right? And they had to right. remind their players to say, "Wait, wait, this is an actual beta test. This is for pr- this is for testing the game, not previewing it." So. No hard feelings right. if you didn't get in. We really want to make a good game, and we want people to give us feedback. And they were they were fucking awesome about iterating on feedback. The game released without, as we discussed earlier, a ranked mode, and we only just got it. And that was because they put it into the beta towards the end of beta, and people said, mm, "This isn't exactly what they want." And so they're like, "Okay, shit, we won't do it that way." And they they responded directly to the feedback. Uh, that's something yeah. that an indie developer just does not have the opportunity for at all. So do we, do we like, I guess I'll, we'll probe each one of us. Do we like this idea of uh, AAA standards, these, these trend settings that uh, AAA developers are setting? Because I feel like some of the trends they're setting are great, but some of them are kind of shitty. Like, I, I, I'm, I don't know. They like, have their strengths. Like, right. I mean, like, I, I think that the things that we discussed are great. The fact that they have hot QA is awesome. We get to, if you want to see some gorgeous stuff, Look to a triple uh, triple A game. If you want to see something a little more innovative, maybe don't. Maybe look elsewhere. Right. Maybe look at No Man's Sky. Maybe look at um, Darkest Dungeon or something like that, where right. it's not quite as as humongous. Um, right. Maybe look for, at like Enter the Gungeon. You know, Enter the Gungeon. Other, like, That's indie. a yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, 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 Crypt of the Necro Dancer. You know, like such right. an original idea that would never see the light of day in a triple A space. Right. Right. For me as a gamer, I'm most happy when I have like a sweet. Um, balance. I play both AAA games and indie games a lot. And usually I play like one big AAA game over a span of time, like I did with Uncharted, and just like be sprinkling in indie games all the while. Enter the Gungeon, Crypt of the Necrodancer. Right. You know. The Culling. The Culling. Fuck. Right. The Culling. Yeah, mm. I, do, I, do, I do the same. I do the same thing, Dakota. I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I, I, I will usually play like one big game right now being Overwatch. Um, before it was like League or Heroes of the Storm, which I don't know if you would, would you consider League a AAA game? I, I think they started off not a AAA game, but at this point, Riot's so fucking huge, they have to be a AAA game now. Yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird genre to kind of even assign the label the MOBA genre just because MOBA is kind of about, of about a MOBA is a game as a service. It's about continuous delivery. It's always being right. worked on and stuff. Um, so it doesn't like have a big bang release and then it's over. It's kind of like it's it's always in development. But you are right. I, I think that um, that it started in you know in, in its infancy. It was a fucking indie shtick, man. It was like two dudes right. that had worked on the Dota mod, and they went and began actually making a game. And now that Riot makes a bajillion bajillion dollars. All of his words. Bajillion bajillion. Bajillion bajillions. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, they definitely have a AAA style of updating. I will tell you that. I've played League since like beta. And I mean, I, I don't play consistently, but I have played it a lot and seeing the amount of work that they put into like getting this game to where it is now and how they've, they just, uh, released their third update, uh, changing rise, one of their first characters that came out. Mm-hmm. And it's like that, the concept of that alone, just like that they released this game, like when it first came out in beta, they updated him for that current meta because he didn't make sense very much. And now they've updated him again. Cause he still hasn't kept up. Like, the idea that, like, okay, we made him. Ah, he's not exactly what we wanted. Let's update him. Ah, still wasn't where he wanted. Let's update him again. I think that is almost, like, un aaa like that you're never really going to see a AAA developer kind of admit to a fault like that. Uh, I, I yeah. feel like I've never seen a like, – like, Blizzard, for example, has a very hard time of going, okay, we fucked up right here. Let's change it. And Riot's like, yeah, no, we fucked up twice. This is our third time. Hopefully, you know, third time's a charm. I don't think I'd agree with that at all about Blizzard, at least. Um, but maybe other other big developers. I mean, Blizzard, like, 
they removed the fucking whole uh, whole uh, auction house from from Diablo. So that was a fucking huge mistake, like a core core component of that game. And the same thing we just talked about with rank mode, where they they tried twice, and both both entire implementations were like completely wrong, and the players didn't like it. So they said, "Fuck, we'll just tear it out and try again." But maybe that. Did I say Blizzard? I meant yes. I meant Wizards. I'm so sorry. I was thinking of Magic. Wizards. Oh Wizards. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm For sorry, sure. I completely confused myself. I was yeah, like, hey, well, you're I mean, right. Why did I say Blizzard? <laughs> well, yeah, like, uh, uh, I mean, maybe that speaks to what you were talking about, how Blizzard isn't really, they kind of have that feel of of a non-corporate, what, right? And, and maybe right. that's why we think of them as not AAA. I mean, right, gotta, they, seem, they seem to be more for the gamer. My headset went out there for a second. But okay, back you're now. back. I saw you messing around. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping that you, okay, cool, cool, cool. This new freaking headset I got just died on me for some reason um and it's really weird hearing through my earbuds <laughs> like i don't know how to how i hear myself <laughs> um <laughs> but blizzard is is kind of in the place where nintendo almost is in, in, in a weird way nintendo is definitely a triple a game but it's also a nintendo culture like nintendo's been around a long time you know what you're getting when you're getting nintendo it's a true. lot of nintendo's consoles are kind of like nintendo only for a while here it, for pc gamers PC gaming kind of fell out of favor in, in the sometime in the 2000s before Steam started getting big, and we only really had Blizzard, right? We True. had like right, that's all we had, yeah. Yeah, we had Diablo, we had the uh, the Crap couple Crap. Blizzard RTSs. Though, of course, there were other PC games out there, but the really big ones, the one that you know that like was going to be 100 percent quality on a uh, PC was Blizzard. So they are AAA, but it's a culture around it too that a lot of a lot of AAA developers seem to try and get that culture, but it always feels weird and corporate. Like, uh, I know EA, when they made their origin, mm. they tried to get everybody into this EA culture, and it's just it's just not happening. People hate them, right? They're like, fuck yeah. you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely Good try, not. EA. Very honest attempt. But so no. so why, why do people dislike EA? Like, Or is there something about AAA developers, kind of generally speaking, that... Uh, turn people off. It's it's the same thing that you see in a lot of corporate settings. Whenever they try and push their idea onto the customer instead of listening to the customer, or they warp what the customer wants. Let me tell you way. what you want in this game. Exactly. Let me tell you what you want in a way that will give us money. Right. 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 Or or the idea of making games for money, not for the love of making games. Sure. I think that's one of the reasons. I think that's one of the reasons I love Blizzard is because you can tell. When you watch those BlizzCons, you just like those guys fucking love those games. They are like absolutely in love with what they do. Absolutely. And when you look at a Call of Duty game, you're like, no one loves this shit. You guys are all like <laughs> on the verge of suicide in the developer studio, just like hating your life. Yeah, yeah, so I, that's one of the reasons I don't like AAA games is they sure. just they feel forced. They don't feel like they care. They just feel forced. And yeah, as, as Chris said, anytime you've got that corporate culture, it's the same thing in Hollywood, man. Like your big blockbuster movies are going to be, for the most part, safe and not take a lot of risks and be. Yes, exactly. they, they will have too many people in suits that have an influence on the, uh, on the final product because they're protecting their own investment and they think that they know better. Um, there's an awesome fucking movie called uh, The Death of Superman Lives. It's about the Superman movie starring Nick Cage that never uh, made it to air, uh, to the screen. Oh, yeah. Directed by Tim Burton and originally written by Kevin Smith. And uh, and there's Ow. they, they interview this dude who is some sort of fucking, basically a suit. Like he, he's like a, a producer of some sort. And it's, it's fucking comical. He looks like a fake character in the interviews because the shit that comes out of his mouth, you're like, you can't possibly believe what you're saying you're a fucking idiot like he right. thinks he knows everything right. about what everybody wants and what makes a good movie and he's a fucking idiot um was that it's the scary. guy who, who really wanted a big spider in it it is he yes up doing that's wild, yes so wild, if you've wild, heard wild kevin West. smith tell the story about the guy that wanted him to put a giant spider as the end bo- end and, and boss i said video games the end villain yeah. in superman that's the guy uh, he wanted polar okay. bears he wanted he wanted superman to fight polar bears he wanted uh wow. he wanted superman to have guards at his fortress of solitude and kevin smith's like Superman doesn't have fucking cards. What are you talking about? You know? Yeah. Um, so it's that kind of thing. It's that kind of thing with, with AAA titles as well, where if, if you have an irresponsible, you know, process, then you're going to have too many people who don't care about the product or the game. They just care about the money they might reap from it. Yeah. Right. You, you mentioned something, Dakota, that I never really thought of, but you're right. Like AAA developers, they're not really going to take risks. They're going to give you a tutorial. 
right? Like a tutorial was not something that you really got back in the day. Like you kind of, I mean, you did, but it was always more elegant instead of just like a page of like, here's how to play this game. Let me just like show it to you for 10 seconds. And then I'll introduce you to the first level. You got, you know, you got like a Mega Man thing where like they kind of like taught you how to play by playing or you got like a Pokemon thing where they taught you how to play by playing the game. That, and that's, just, I like, think giving that's you this, just like hand fed fucking, I don't know. I, that's one thing I don't like when a game just like tries to tell you what to do or this idea yeah. of like, Push Y and we'll tell you where to go. Like I've, it was I've even never, in Bioshock, uh, which please, I, yeah. I hate it. But I've I've never uh, I've never thought about that as a triple A thing. Maybe maybe it is. I'd, I'd have to look. But that's definitely like just a good game design thing. Like there's a uh, the the creator of Mario. There's a cl- uh, video of him playing through the uh, uh, stage one or World War One stage one and describing to you how that level is is created in such a way to teach the player how to play the game. And it's fucking awesome. It's great. Um, it's perfect. This idea of like, let me show you where to go because if you don't figure out this game, you're gonna hate it. Ugh, this like safety net that they need. I don't, I, I don't like it's, it. It's less of that. Maybe they, they don't have time or resources, which is kind of funny because that's what we talk about when AAA because they have a lot of resources and time when they have yeah. split between all those people sure. to to spend development time making those first couple levels, you know, that carefully crafted. But because that's that's, you, that's what you should get from a AAA title. They like you just said, they have the time, they have the money. But with they're up against a deadline with bunch of a bunch of fucking shareholders, but, and they need to like meet you know quarter three quotas. Like bullshit. I don't again, want my games to meet quarter three quotas and be subpar. That's that's bullshit. It's, it's still generalizing. Not a lot of games do that um, in the AAA space. So a lot do now, but not as many every time. For instance, Blizzard does it in their uh, Overwatch, but it's completely optional. It's there, and I think with games having such a wide um, audience now that it might be necessary for sometimes for a, a gamer who has never played that genre or whatever to have that tutorial, or they, they won't have any idea what to do. They're kind of caught well, you know, between fall, a rock and a hard fall place in, because... Fall in or ship the fuck out. Yeah, but they, see, that's where they <laughs> that's where their triple A-ness kind of, kind of shines, right? Because yeah. they do make quality games. They obviously care about them very much, but they also want the maximum number of people to play them. Um, right. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, man. As, as long as they keep that shit optional or whatever, the, the, they, the struggle becomes when you compromise gameplay for the sake of numbers, and that's a fucking discussion in and of uh, itself, right? I think like Gears of War or something, the third one, they had a situation at the beginning where they, they – uh, you could either go with one guy who's like, hey, you feeling rusty? You need a brief on whatever. And if you did it, he'd show you like all the stuff. And it'd be kind of like in the area, like you'd be like, oh, jump over this thing. This fell in the way. So you jump over it, like press X or, oh, watch out. This building's going to fall and you had to run to get out of the way. Or you could have just skipped it all totally. Be like, nah, I'm good. And then you would have gone on to the game. So like stuff like that is totally cool. And that's totally fine in games. I guess. I guess I guess, maybe maybe that's just me being a little pigheaded, but I feel like I remember games not really explicitly teaching me and then kind of just you just kind of like learning as you go. And I miss mm-hmm. that. I guess I miss that from games like that you cuz you could tell that there was care put into it. Like you just said Dakota, with that with that Mario level, you can tell that there was care put into it. And even if you can't, maybe that means if you can't tell that they're teaching you how to play the game with their level, that means that it did its job. Yeah, so, absolutely, absolutely. And it's, I, it's, I guess I just miss that kind of care in in gaming. Yeah, uh, we talked a little bit. It's kind of related to the whole uh, safe bet money thing, but franchises is something that occurs uh, far more often in the AAA space than it doesn't like the indie space. And that's because franchises are, are f- a form of safety. When you've established characters and you already know that the players love them and, and will buy the product just because of the name on the box cover, you know, that's that's fucking, that's a game. That's a AAA game right there. That's a, that's a game worth making according to some people, right? Um, and and that, that can suck. That, that can be a good thing. It can also suck quite a bit of dick. Um, right. I'm terrified, and fuck, for the love of Christ, find a way to play this game. I'm terrified about the last of us 2 because the first game was so perfect in and of itself it doesn't need a sequel but i i'm afraid that they're going to make one because they're going to make one because it's a franchise and it's a safe bet and it will make a bajillion dollars so that that's a fear um that's always a fear so yeah yeah. i mean I'm, i'm right there with you you know you could have bioshock which is beautiful but then they can make Bioshock 2, which is not so beautiful. But <laughs> then they can make Bioshock Infinite, which is fucking amazing. So it's like it just it really depends on That's true. the But you can but you can tell though, because I've played a little bit of Bioshock 2 since I bought it on a one random Steam sale a long time ago. And 
I, I played a little bit of it, and you can tell that, like, when I played Bioshock 2, you can tell it was kind of like autopilot. Like, they didn't really do much different than they did in the first one. It literally is the epitome of a safe bet. Whereas in Bioshock Infinite, it's literally a whole new character. It's in a completely different place, all different types of abilities. So you can tell that they actually tried with this one, and they just threw the safety net out the window. So, I mean, it's it's not really a sequel so much as it's just another game in a similar universe. Sure. Sure, no. absolutely. It's a, it's a different thing. So, I mean, we're bashing a lot of – we're bashing AAA a little bit here. We're, I mean, we're, 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 we're talking ill of them a little bit, um, poking at its flaws. Do, do we really think that they deserve this kind of rep that they're getting? Like, do we think that it's fair to to judge them based on this, Dakota? Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I think I think it's important to have open, honest discussions about this kind of shit because if you don't, then then you lose uh, kind of influence as like a culture. If nobody said that they didn't like the way that certain things were go- were going, then they would continue to go that way. And hopefully, right. I mean, hopefully we were loud enough and and you know have a big enough. Uh, hopefully we're important enough to the people that making games that it will matter, right? Right. But beyond that, we we mentioned how they set the standards. You don't want the the standard setters to 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 have shitty standards, right? Sure. We have to criticize them. That's why we have game critics. That's why they came up because people are spending their real money on this. If there wasn't money involved, if anybody was just getting this for free, it'd be like, ah, oh, you know what? That little flaw, no big deal. But when you spend money to expect a certain level of quality, to expect games not to crash, to even beyond that, to expect like a, a complete narrative, to expect not to be nickel and dimed in, in a game that you bought, I, I think it's definitely necessary to criticize these practices. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I completely agree. I'll, I'll criticize the shit out of him. I have no problem. I have a big mouth. Um, I... <laughs> But what, what, I, what I do see is a lot of people – so when I was doing a little bit of research on this, a lot of people were saying that, like, they want to see AAA games go under. They want to see them just, like, fall and that let the indie games take over the world. Would that be a good thing, Chris? Like, is that something that we should be hoping for? Because I, I can see both sides of the coin, but I'm really not sure. I'm right on the fence there. What are your thoughts? I mean, definitely it wouldn't – that can't happen. Like, well, indie okay. games take well, over the world. Barring that it, whether or not it could happen. No, no, yeah, yeah I'm saying be barring a good thing. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it wouldn't be a good thing because it, it just couldn't happen. Eventually, there would be a game who would, who would rise to the top, and then they would have to start creating better and better, and it would just create this new system. It's almost again. like light doesn't exist without <laughs> darkness, kind of thing. Like exactly. if you don't have AAA games, then what are indie games independent from? They're, 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 right. they're just games at that point, right? And then you'll see that sift shift. And I, I agree with Chris. I don't think it's – no, I, I don't think that would be a good thing because, uh, you know, you, you got to think about it reasonably. And I'm not saying you, Mitch, because you're, you're on the fence and you're not the people on the internet writing death to AAA games. That's ridiculous. I mean, like, so many good games have come out in – I mean, in ever. Um, there's nothing wrong with, with good AAA games. It's just you got to be uh, – you got to be vigilant. You got to you gotta be uh, willing to express your opinion about a game, you know, uh, make sure that your voice is heard or whatever um, as far as like, you know, not not allowing for, for craptastic stuff. But if we don't have AAA games, we don't have shit like Horizon Zero Dawn coming out, you know, or right. God of War oh, 4, which God. looks tits, you know, or Dishonored 2. Like fucking two, two of the three games I mentioned are even franchise sequels and, and, and they look fucking dope. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn, a new IP from a studio that had a well-established franchise that they chose to just say, okay, we're done, which is cool. We don't get for better, or for worse, whatever that's going to turn out the new resident evil game. Yeah. Right. right? They Seven. took an old franchise and twisted it after they finally listened to people and said, we don't like, you know, quick time events anymore, brought it back to its horror roots. Mm-hmm. We have companies that have the, the, the money and, there is a culture behind it in some way. So they are willing to take some risks to still bring out these, these high pro- quality products. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, so I, I guess that I'm on the fence cause I think it would be fun to see triple A gaming go up in flames, but I don't necessarily know if it would be good or bad yeah. or if it could happen. And I know that it, the same thing would just happen. It's like, it's like if you take out the superpower, someone else is going to rise to be the superpower. It's just going to happen. Like, right. Like if you take out the uh, top, there's a new top, you know, mm-hmm. right. I think it's also comes from this, we could talk about this another time, but our the gaming culture itself is negative and critical, and I don't know where we kind of got this culture of negativity. It's true. What are you talking Everybody's about? You, always... suck. you don't know anything. Uh, you're probably right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so I think I think we've done enough talking about AAA gaming. I think we've done enough bashing. I'm gonna take a risk here and say let's go on to the meta bet. Were you not sure Chris, if I was, was ready? That, is that good? No, yeah. I was I was looking for Chris to, ju- to judge my transition. Ah, ah, yeah. Usually Chris, he's got let's the. Do this. Let's do this, Chris. I want every week. I want you to give me a one to ten rating of my transition. So we'll start with that one. Okay. Uh, the pun game wasn't too strong in that one. I'm going to give it about a five. <laughs> okay, that, that's exactly where I thought that one was, was middle okay. of the road. All right, All right guys. Right, Dakota, uh, Dakota. For those that don't know, the meta bet is the game where we bet on the Metacritic score of an upcoming video game. Uh, the winner assigns the loser some sort of video game stipulation or punishment, or you have to play this. And actually, this week, we're going to debut some some changes, some changes to ye yeah, old meta bet. Excited. Woo! Um, excited. So uh, I think before we do, um, maybe let's talk about what we what we bet on last week. Is that where we want to start? What did we What did we bet on last week? Yeah, uh, we bet on Lego that Star Wars: right. The Force Awakens for the PlayStation Four. Oh, that's 4. right. That's right. Uh, going from top to bottom, Chris bid eighty six, I bid eighty four, and Mitch bid eighty two. Today on the day of release, with only five reviews this morning, Lego Star Wars: oh, wow. The Force Awakens has a Metacritic score of 77, making Mitch damn the winner. Yeah, quite low, quite yes. low. And you know what's funny? Yes. I heard I heard somebody say, uh, I think the person that wrote the IGN review said on Twitter, "It's the best Lego game to date. You guys should play it." Which might be true. I don't think they're very good games, so I'm not the audience he's speaking to. But 77 is the best. Yikes! Wow. Yeah, I played Lego. I played Lego Harry Potter, and I was like, I played it for like thirty minutes, and I was just like, uh, "Is it?" That's exactly the noise I made. Just, uh, hmm. I played the what original Lego Star Wars, and I thought like at the time that was fun, like it was a really cool idea. But I think everyone's been the same. Oh man, Earth Captain's calling us out. He is out. calling us out, and and we're oh, using no. today as a good reset day. He says, "Did you guys play your no boost hoops?" No, Mitch and I did not play our no what? boost hoops. The second time I even the assigned second it? time he assigned it. He did second time today. I actually oh, have time God. after the show, so Mitch, if you're available, I can do it after the show. You better do it. Yeah, there's we'll no do it after stopping. The you're doing it today. It's been busy, man. New house, wedding. Oh my God. D and D. There's too much D and D to play, man. Too much Dungeons and Dragons. Um. So, uh. So what we're going to do now, so Mitch won. So what we're going to do is we're going to unveil, uh, what are we calling this? The Wheel the of wheel Misfortune. The Wheel of Misfortune. All right, yes. let's bring up ye old Wheel of Misfortune. So there's the wheel. We put oh. on the wheel a, uh, a number of things. Chris and Mitch can't actually see it, so Chris is go- just going to have to take our word for it. Uh, we put I'm on the sure wheel a number beautiful. of choices. What's that? I'm sure it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, it's, it's got goddamn so many beautiful. Choices. I made it show colors and everything. Um, wow. We're going to spin like the wheel. farmer's market up in here. Exactly. Uh, we're gonna spin the wheel, and uh, and it's gonna decide our fate. You know, like uh, you've seen on a million uh, game shows before it. Um, so what do we have on the uh, on the wheel, Mitch? Just a couple. Um, uh, so we had a couple of them. We have the uh, the steam cleaner. That's one I came up with. It's good. Um, that's one where you tell I pick a game in your Steam library that you have never played, and I make you play it for like an not, hour. Yeah, or haven't played enough, or something like that. Or you haven't played enough yet. You only have like two minutes with or something. So that way, you know, because we've all bought games. Clear on up steam that sales. Steam let's, backlog. Let's let's not go through it. Let's let's surprise. Let's people just let so the wheel dictate. It. Yeah, we'll, we'll it'll let's be a surprise. All right, so. You don't get to click. I wish you got to spin it since you won, Mitch. So I'm gonna have to uh, to spin it for oh, you. Wait. Here we go. Uh, here, wait. That's what you wanted. You wanna listen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that! It's the steam cleaner, Mitch. It's the steam cleaner. Look at that! It's like All right. I, it's like I knew. So who lost, Dakota? You lost, right? Uh, yeah. Now we got to look at who actually lost since we're only doing one and one. Ah, uh, Chris lost. Chris was up top. You were at the bottom. Oh. Ah, Chris. All right. So Chris, there has to be a game in your Steam library that you have never played. Oh yeah, uh, there's a bunch. How do I search for you? How do I look for you? How, how about how to... I just pick one? No, I pick. I won. Why would you get to pick one? Why? How would that? Because <laughs> be I have fair? a lot. Like you'll have how to ask. Uh, did you play this one? Did you play this one? Did you play this one? No, how would that be fair? I can look at your Steam library, bro. It's fine. I can look at your view Steam profile. I'm gonna pick a game that you've never played, and you're gonna play it. It's gonna be great. I can't look at your games. All right, Chris, you <laughs> rattle off a couple of them. I'm just gonna pick based on names. So rattle off a few that have zero hours played. Um, I have Darksiders, Darksiders Two. Uh, I've never played Flotilla. That. I 
want you to play that game. Because <laughs> I have no idea. What the oh. fuck is Flotilla? I don't even know. Uh, I, I got know. it in like a humble bundle. I bought it on 11 2010 yep. Oh my god. This is great. That's All right. I bought it. It's not even on the Steam store. Oh, there it is. Flotilla. Oh, I remember this game. Yeah, this was in a Humble Bundle. This game looks ridiculously dumb. It was before Humble Bundle. It was like the indie... Jesus. Group All right, cool. Well, 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 next week you will. Uh, you don't have to beat it. You know, just put in an hour or so. You know, put some good time into it. Yeah, I, um, I'm. I'm also gonna want a screenshot of uh, an hour played. I want to see it. Oh, that's good. Oh, just, just proofies, proofies. All right, fair cool. enough. Well, that's the uh, the wheel of misfortune in the uh, the new MetaBet segment. Something else that we're gonna do that we didn't mention too is um, these guys had assigned me uh, the MetaBet to play through Half Life too. And we decided that what we're going to do for super long-term engagements like that, um, those are going to be our meta quests. And basically, when you spin, um, you can basically, instead of spinning, if the person that you get to assign is not currently on a meta quest, they aren't currently playing through a long game, you can assign them a new long game. And then they have to do that in addition to any time they lose, you know, from then on. But that one, they can take as long as they need. Yeah, they will just take the time they take. Yeah, and yeah. that's going to be good for me, too, because I have a lot of games that I haven't played that Chris is like, how have you not fucking played this game? So I'm excited. Yeah. Cool, cool, All right, cool. so what are we betting on this week? All right, this week we are betting on the Banner Saga 2 for PlayStation 4. This game's already out, but it's coming out on, it's out on PC. It's coming out on uh, consoles uh, next Tuesday. Huh. It's a good, uh, it's good series. I played the first one. I haven't played the second one. It's good. It's a tactical RPG. And in between, you know, like in... It. Oh, it's very good. It's very good. The art style is really cool. a lot really of anime cool. stuff going on here. Yeah, like the anime, anime RPG. Mm-hmm. The animation is oh, very man. sweet. Uh, it's a tactical RPG, RPG, but in between the battles, instead of just like selecting where you're going to go next on some sort of overworld map, you watch your army like march, at least in the first one. And um, there's like a lot of kind of uh, role play, like dialogue choices where you'll see people join your war party and leave them. And depending on what you say to whom different things happen, it's, it was good. It's a very, very, the that first one was a good. very good game. Um, so Banna right, Saga, I got my number. Saga two. I got my number. I've got my number. Chris, do you have your number ready? I have my number. Okay. On the count of three, one, two, and three. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Oh, we were oh, we were shit. tighter than we were uh, this week. All right. This top to bottom. As tight as we've ever been. Yeah. Oh, super tight. ASR, keeping it tight. Um, I'm up top with 85. And Chris and Mitch are tied one point below me, 84. Keeping it wow, this is gonna short be, and sweet. This is going to be the closest meta bet we've ever had. So the, uh, the, the second week that we do the Wheel of Misfortune, we've got uh, a tie score, too. Yeah. So we'll have to figure know. out how to resolve that. Yeah, I don't know how we're going <laughs> to do that when we, we didn't really come up with what we do in the, in the midst of a tie. No, nope, we'll, we'll figure it out. We have a whole week. Don't worry about it, boys. Yep. I remember we were talking good. about this, too, actually. And you were like, when was the last time we had a tie? That like, only happened like once or twice. And of course, well, look at this. Yeah. Actually, yeah. we had it a lot. I remember we had a lot of ties. If you guys win, reason. yeah, yeah. If you guys win, it'll be tie win. That's too funny. Wow. Too funny. Double spins. Those are the double spins. Ooh. Shit. All right. Well, as always, Analog Stick Radio is brought to you by Bit Cultures. Now, Bit Cultures is a site that features video game reviews, opinion pieces, and a boatload of digital media, just like this show. So, if that's something that you'd be interested in, if you've enjoyed yourself here, make sure you pop on over there, www.bitcultures.com. Check it out. There's a lot of good stuff, and I'm sure you'll find something you like. If you want to reach us, Analog Stick Fun Boys, you can email us at analogstickradio at gmail.com, or you can tweet us at ASR Podcast. Give Dakota something to do because he's really bored at work. Um, we record every single Tuesday night right here, twitch.tv slash analogstickradio, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. But if you can't make it, can't hang out with us, we're published to iTunes, uh, what is it, Google Play, and all your favorite podcast trackers the following Thursday at around noon. Uh, any parting words before we go play some fucking hoops? Hey, yeah. goddamn Jordan's on. I still play. I still play Clash Royale. Join our our uh, join our clan. No one cares about that <laughs> game. Clan or log stick. It's no. clan or log space stick. Join our Clash Royale. You're the only one opening chests. You're the only one. Jeez. No, there's like we have a bunch of people in it, so the space is limited. I cannot okay. believe you're still playing that game. <laughs> I can't. A lot of people still I play that game. It. I deleted it within like an hour. All right, well, once again, for Analog Stick Radio, my name is Mitch. This has been Mitch, Chris, Dakota. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Adios.